Welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Elder George Park Sr. So glad to be with you tonight. We're coming from Christ Temple of Omaha, and we thank God for this opportunity. We're located at the Center Mall, Suite 127, 1941 South 42nd Street, in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Our telephone number is 402-932-0880. Please, again, feel free to give us a call for information, ride, or prayer. And our Sunday services are as follows. Sunday schools, 9.30 a.m., morning service, 11 a.m., Sunday night, 6 p.m. You're welcome to come and enjoy these services with us. Wednesday night is Bible class where we do have the Word of God and we're able to answer the questions concerning the subject at hand, you're again welcome to come and be a part of that. That is at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. We do have a prayer and deliverance service on Friday night where we do again praise God and we let the Lord bless us as we've been through the week. And I know that the world, they have their Friday night out, but the saints of God have a time that we can always praise God. You know, they did that years ago, that they had a time on Friday night, the people of God. But we've gotten away from that, but that's all right. But I tell you that we're endeavoring to continue the work of the Lord. And so we know that these days are coming to an end. We know that Jesus is coming very soon. So again, I thank the Lord for being in your living room tonight. And I'm going to give you the information that this broadcast is going to be on our log, and I'm going to refer, ask you to refer. If there's any questions that you'd like to have or you want to talk about on this broadcast, the, the subject uh, will be in my log, but this is the number that you should refer to, uh, 1-5, and we will be able to get with you and talk about the scriptures and the things that we talked about on this broadcast. Again, we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. For another day, we thank the Lord for how he blessed us again. Another week has gone by, and we are saying that he woke us up this morning, started us on our way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Aren't you glad today, knowing that the power of God is around us? We walk around the blessings of the Lord. There's blessings all around, and we have eyes to see, ears to hear, hands and feet to use, and to go about our daily activity. Sometimes we do take these things for granted, but aren't you glad for those who recognize the gifts and the powers of God that you're able to have these activities? And so tonight we're so glad again to be with you, amen, in another service, another Bible uh, uh, class or teaching uh, tonight. And so we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, asking the Lord to help us and help our community, help our city. Help those who are in authority, help those that are helping other people. And so we know that the people of God know how to pray. They know how to get in contact with God. Because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It is not because that we are so wise here in the city of Omaha and that the money is really good as keeping us afloat. It is the hand and the power of God. Amen. We know that God is blessing this city. Amen. We see the calamities that other cities have gone through, the floods, the uh, hurricane, the tornadoes, all those things at the most unopportune time, around Christmas time, for them to have such destruction. But aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful tonight? Amen. These things have not come nigh thy dwelling. We serve a great God. Let us pray. And I hope that you're at a position or a place where you can bow your head and close your eyes. We thank God today. Father, again, in your name, Lord, I love you tonight. Lord, I thank you for how that you blessed us. Again, to set before this microphone. Lord God, I know that you set this up together. Oh God, you gave us, Lord, this opportunity to speak your word. Lord God, we're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed, oh God, of standing and uh, on your word. We're not ashamed, Lord God, of the things that the scriptures have said. Because we found salvation there. Lord God, I pray tonight that you'll bless this city that we're in. Bless the officials. Bless the police department. The fire department. All the nurses and doctors that are working. Lord, some of them are tirelessly working. 
around the clock. Those relatives and those ones who have relatives in the hospital, we pray, Lord God, for the hands around their bed. Lord God, for the medicine, even that they get, that they get the right medicine, that it won't cause them that harm. Oh, God, we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, remember those who are locked up tonight. Lord God, they're there, but they're not forgotten. Lord, you're everywhere. You see them. Lord, you do set high, and you look low. We pray, Lord God, don't let them give up. Don't let them feel like that everything and everybody is against them. But Lord God, in the name of Jesus, some way, somehow, set the captive free. Set them, Lord God, not only free from the bars around them, but from the lifestyle that they've lived. Oh God, you're able to change everything. You're just that kind of God. We pray tonight, Lord God, for this studio, for those who work here. We pray, Lord God, again tonight for this broadcast. Help us to say your word. Lord God, I love you. Oh God, I'm not ashamed. I will go forward, Lord God, because your word is true, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Again tonight, I'm glad to be here. We're going to talk about the subject at hand. Talk about repentance. It is the narrow escape. Repentance is a narrow escape. Somebody might say, what do you mean by that, preacher? Repentance, a narrow escape. The Bible has given us this word going to the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. It's in the New Testament. Verse 23 to 30, it says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar. This is Paul speaking. Uh, an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 26, And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live we and move and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are in the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. Verse 30 is what I want you to focus in on. And the times of this ignorance, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere, everywhere, to repent. The Bible says, and I'll read over in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Amen. Uh, starting at verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter. And reading out of that, uh, 17 and 18. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If those that are saved are scarcely, not on their own, God's going to look down and he's going to see what we really are all about. But if his mercy says, all right, I will accept you, then you're going to scarcely make it in. But where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? Amen. What we mean by that is that how? That the Lord, he have allowed us to do one thing, and that we can get the heaven to move on our behalf. That word is repent. It's not your money. You can have all the money in the world. That will not 
influence or affect God. You can have all the friends in the world. You can have all the fame that will not affect God. But when a man or a woman, boy or girl, repent of their past sins and they're truly sorry, God is moved. Amen. And we've often said is how that the Lord isn't willing that any should perish. He gives us that ability to say those two words, I'm sorry, Lord. And I'm adding the Lord part, forgive me. And when you get to that point that you really want to be forgiven, you're turning away. You're not saying words. You're not making a vain promise. You are turning away. Ask the question in a Bible class or in a service I was in. If they were to unload the prison, just open up the prison doors, let everybody out, everybody. I mean, don't leave not a one in there. Bring them all out. How many of you think would return or do something to cause them to go right back into that prison? The ones that are in there, some of them have confessed and uh, acknowledged their wrong, and then some of them have repented. You know, there are many men and women who've been locked up at one time or another, and they repent of that deed, and you never see them again in jail, never locked up again. Life goes on for them. I'm saying that one word, repent, where they turned away. Amen. Society can say everything. They can try to put a tag on them, try to label them, but they have repented, and they've turned away. What I'm saying is it works. Repentance works, even uh, 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 in the prison system, even at home. And when you've got family, brother, family, mother, father, children, and something is wrong and you repent of the wrong, you turn away from the wrong, there is an area, there's a spirit of forgiveness that I cannot explain to you right now that comes to that individual. When they know and the person that they're talking to know, they'll never do that again. They'll never come that way again. They'll never say that again. And I'm saying is that it is special. God give us that ability. We're a free will agent that we can say, I'm sorry, we can repent unto him. I'll tell you, dear ones, there is something that uh, we want from God. And there is something that God wants from us. Did you hear me? There is something that we want from God. And there is something that God wants, us, wants from us. What do we want from God? We want the blessings. We want the good life. We want the things to be better. Amen. We want things to flow, as you might say. But God, he requires a repentant heart. He requires a person that love him because he did say that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. A repentant heart loves God and keeps the commandments of God. And it works. It's all God is requiring. There are a lot of people today. Amen. They say that they are saved. They say they are Christian. Amen. But they don't repent of the past life. They don't repent of the deeds years ago or times ago. Amen. Can I give you a brief uh, notice of what this is all about, what the Bible, what uh, Jesus and everything is really all about? As Jesus came down, died on the cross, follow what I'm saying. He died on the cross. Amen. That our past sins will be forgiven by God, not by the person you did it to, because they may not never forgive you for that. But God will wipe your slate clean. And in time and in due time, he may uh, allow that person that was offended to look at you and say, you know what? They never did it again. They really meant what they said. And I can see that God did something in their life. And so if you repent of your sins and God is able to take those past sins and wipe your slate clean, God is able to do that. But he's also in his word. You've got to come to church. You've got to come around and be taught how to not to repeat the same things again. Amen. One thing will irritate you and me is having two flat tires in the same week. Amen. Uh, you say, oh, man, I just got finished having a flat. And now here it is again. I've got another flat. That's the way it is with people who have not repented. They repeat the same trouble. They repeat the same thing that's wrong. But God doesn't want you to keep going in circles. Amen. So he'll give you his word. He'll teach you out of his book. Amen. What thus saith the Lord. There is a blessed life that most people don't understand that you can live. 
But let me say this, and moving on, I know my time will run quickly. Amen. But you don't have all forever, as you might say, to repent. You only got a brief time to get it together. Before God calls your name, my name. Before he comes. Amen. And I'll say is that there's examples in the Bible. If I can briefly go through this lesson tonight that you're able to follow along. Daniel, the fourth chapter. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, starting at verse 1. The king unto all people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the inter interpretation of the dream. Verse 7, then came in the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and that no secret troubleth thee, tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves were fair, and the fruit there, thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had, swallow, had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. Verse 13, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, and cut off his branches, and shake off his leaf his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's and a, let a, heart, a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watcher and the demand of the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. All right. Mm hmm. And he had that. And it says that uh, this dream, O uh, I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had seen now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as uh, all the wise men of all my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. But thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. But the part I want to get to is that if you know that this king was very proud, and he felt like that he was the great uh, uh, one, and how that he... Uh, saw the great city of Babylon, amen, and how that he uh, was able to brag on what he had done, what he had saw, amen. And so uh, I want to get to the scripture where it says, whose leaves, verse 21, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and it, in, it was me for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon those whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. And verse 23, whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, who down the tree and destroy it, yet the leaf, the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, 
and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over. That was the interpretation of the dream. Amen. And so verse 28 and 29, and I'll stop reading at that point because my point is taken right there. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 29, at the end of 12 months, glory to God. Let me say that again. At the end of 12 months, one year, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Verse 31, while the words was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling. Glory to God. He didn't repent. He had a warning. Everything was laid out for him. He had some people that could not interpret the dream. And those who struggled to interpret the dream, they really was waiting on somebody to give the interpretation, and God gave it to Daniel. Amen. And when God gave him that interpretation of the dream, it was a warning. It was the very thing he needed to know not to do, not to brag on his own works of his hands. God don't care that you made a mistake, that you've done something wrong. Repent. He's going to give you some time. And this is the most difficult thing that people don't understand is that when God gives you time to get it together, we can stomp, we can holler, we can pray, lay hands on you, anoint you with oil. We can try to do all the things we think that's going to affect God. But no, sir, no man. Time's up. God said, no way am I going to allow you to go any further because you have gotten so to the place that nothing would move you but judgment. Amen. What am I saying all this for is because when a person repents, it is their narrow escape. The Bible says that the righteous will scarcely be saved. Everybody who calls himself righteous, at one place or a time, they have repented of their sins. Amen. They were willing to give it up. And some people say, well, it's hard to do this, that. No, it's not. No, it's not. Amen. If you're willing and you want to be obedient, God will give you the power. He'll take that desire from you. He'll take the joy of the cigarettes. He'll take the joy of the alcohol. I tell many people, I said, you about smoked the fun out of that. Doctors say you got cancer. Amen. You, you got sclerosis of the liver. You've had too much of that beer, that wine, and all those other drinks. You know what? You can't take no more of that. Your body is giving up on you. Glory to God. Do you, can't you see that? Amen. Those diseases that you have for that one night affair, amen, is destroying you now. The doctor's trying to give you shot after shot, pill after pill, to destroy that one night of fun or pleasure that you had with that one person. Amen. You want to be healed? God said, repent. He loves you. God knows how to fix everything. Amen. But you got to be willing to turn, not just to say, I'm sorry, and cry a crocodile tears. My mother had to explain to me what a crocodile tear was. Amen. A meaningless tear. It's for show. It's to get people to get off your back, to make you think or make them think that you're really sorry, that you're really going to change. When Deep down in, on the inside, you know you're not going nowhere. Amen. And I'm saying is that you're running out of time. Amen. The people don't understand the only thing that will make a difference in your life is repenting you can throw as much money out the window send it across the country say it's a seed all you want to glory to God but what is God really requiring repentance how many people spent good money thinking they would get a billion dollars a billion and a half dollars and God said no way I'm not going to take that pressure off of you. I'm not going to make it better for you because you won't come to me. You won't recognize me as God. You recognize money as God. And the preachers are out there just trying to get you to throw money. Yes, it's a seed. You can plant it in your garden <laughs> almost. Well, no, you can't. They say it's a seed, though. But I'm saying is that all you have to do is repent. Amen. Have a soft heart towards God. 
not towards man and things or what have you, but really have a soft heart towards God. He will love you for the same. God wants you to do that. You want God to give you a blessing. Amen. Is that our standoff? <laughs> God's not going to give you the blessing that you want until you repent like he wants. Amen. You're able to do it. Amen. He gave all of us an opportunity in our lesson tonight. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had a whole year to repent. Did he ever think about the dream? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But that particular time when he began to brag about what he had done, and a lot of people, they look on their talent. They say, you don't know the trouble I've seen. You don't know my talent. My, my calling is to sing or whatever like that. God is not caring about your song. Have you repented before you sing your song? Amen. And all these things, you're writing books and doing, have you repented before you wrote your book? Amen. It will affect God. And when God is affected, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. Glory to God. My time is about up tonight. I know that... Sometimes people don't understand that the word of God is still true. That John the Baptist, he began his ministry with the word repent. Jesus began his ministry with the word repent. The disciples were told to preach in all the world and start with the word repent. Amen. We're here tonight saying this is the year 2016. Have you uh, uh, asked God or want the ability to repent of 2015? Glory to God. God can wipe the slate clean. If you're willing and obedient, he'll give you the good of the land. Amen. It's for you. Don't let your time run out. Amen. And you're not going to get the things that God really wants to give to you. Somebody say there's treasures in heaven. There's things laid up aside that you're supposed to have. Your grandma didn't get it. Your grandpa didn't get it. But God wants to give it to you. Can you repent? Can you have a soft heart towards God? He's waiting. Amen. Again, as we go off the air, amen. We're Christ's temple of Omaha, amen, at uh, uh, 41, amen, uh, uh, at the, um, at the center, West Center Mall building. Our telephone number is 402-452-3194. Amen. We also have our church telephone number. Amen. You'll probably see that. You've probably seen that before. Amen. But I'm saying tonight that God wants to save you. There's a song we used to sing in church, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. It's time to surrender to the Lord. Before it's everlasting, forever, too late. The United States has not repented, and it's in a turmoil. Amen. But you can repent and let God bless you this year. Aren't you willing to try? God's able. He has all power. If he's not God of all, then I guess he's not God at all. Amen. You can do it. Amen. Give God a chance. Give God a time. See you next time.